truly honored today to be talking to Robert Bateman, one of Canada's most renowned artists. He is a naturalist and an artist. He doesn't know which one comes first, which I love. He has so many awards. The, he's a life member of the Royal Canadian Academy of Art. He has an Order of Canada, of course, an Order of BC. And most importantly, he just turned 90, which is very exciting. So happy, happy birthday. 24th of May, Queen Victoria's birthday. <laughs> well, over in Salt Spring, are you continuing to paint to, to this day? Every year I have two uh, paintings that I do that are, uh, I guess putting my best foot forward in front of my peers. They're not for sale. One is the, it's a big annual bird art show in Wisconsin at a museum in Wisconsin. And it's been going on since 1978. And um, I put in something every year. And that's what is on the wall behind you, which I can talk about a little bit more in a minute because there's a story behind it too. And then there's another organization called the Society of Animal Artists. and I. I try to put in something every year for those to, to kind of show the flag that I'm still alive. <laughs> so tell us about the one behind you. Yes, it's a, a scene in England. This is uh, the wall of an abandoned house. And I'll, I'll move a bit out of the way. You can see that the wall has been damaged. And the damage to that wall was done by Oliver Cromwell, his troops anyway because um, it was the, the British Civil War and living in a house behind that wall was a um, Catholic family and uh, Oliver Cromwell was a Protestant, as I guess if you know anything about the British Civil War, the Protestants versus the Catholics. And, and so those are two uh, holes made by Oliver Cromwell's cannonballs. Many years later, an artist uh, whose name was Robert Bateman, um, built a house in there. He, he was a late 19th century artist, um, and he, uh, he got a uh, high-born young lady pregnant. And <laughs> this was a shocking thing. It was Victorian, period. And uh, they had to, society cut them off totally, and they had to kind of uh, hide out and escape from the, the regular society. And he he uh, arrived at this ruins that, you know, years before had belonged to uh, um, the uh, the Protestant guy. <clears throat> and, um, and he built himself a, a little house there. And um, then uh, a, uh, a couple bought that property I guess about 10, 15 years ago. And uh, they were wondering who, would, who had owned it. And it was Robert Bateman, uh, the 19th century Robert Bateman, but nobody would talk about him uh, because he was in disgrace at the time and nobody would pass on uh, you know, any news or gossip or anything of him. Um, and so they, they wrote a book called The Secret Life and Loves of Robert Bateman, you're near it, Birgit, have you got it? Oh, good, yeah, I can hold it up just for fun. This is the cover of it. The Lost, uh, if you can read, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. The Raphaelite, The Secret Life and Loves of Robert Bateman. <laughs> and um, this is the, the young woman. And eventually they, uh, uh, you know, they did get married and got, and, and settled down. In, in this setting that you see in the in the background here, but in the in the book, the authors uh, searched high and low. But I'll just show you this is it's quite attractive. That's in the um, mm -hmm. inside the house. Uh, so they searched high and low to find out more information about this Robert Bateman because they had bought the property, and uh, they couldn't find out. They hardly found out anything about him. I got the book and read it, and in it there's a uh, I, I don't need to actually read it, but there's a line that says, we, we went to the furthest reaches of the internet to try, find out more about Robert Bateman, and we kept coming up with references to this irrelevant Canadian artist of the same name. No. We could find. <laughs> and so I wrote them a fan letter and said, uh, 
<laughs> I am the irrelevant Canadian artist, <laughs> and, and we loved your book. Um, and uh, if we're ever over in England, could we come and visit sometime, which we did. Oh, amazing. So, uh, so that is the background behind this story. Nice. And I threw in the, um, the barn owl because barn owls, uh, they don't live all over Canada, but they do happen to live uh, near uh, Vancouver in the, in the flats near Delta. And they, and they live near Lake Erie. But they also live in England. They also live in well. They live in India. They they live all over the place. They're circumpolar. <clears throat> so uh, and I just uh, I like owls a lot, and I threw the barn owl in. That is an amazing story. Everyone is saying right now that there are um, they're they're claiming to see and hear more of the wildlife just based in on the quiet that we're experiencing with COVID-19, are you noticing the same thing? Well, it, I, to be honest, I, actually I don't because we live in a bubble here. Oh. Um, we we uh, live on um, a, a bunch of uh, acres, how many acres, Birgit? 80. 80 acres, um, which we acquired years and years ago when the price was very cheap on a little lake um, and uh, we we own half the lake and the other half the lake is owned by a conservation organization ducks unlimited they're mm -hmm. kind of in charge of it and so it's uh it's our own little nature preserve here and they have uh, several hundred acres <clears throat> and so we live in this little nature area that's kind of a bubble do you find it interesting that for so many that they actually are now looking at nature the way you have always looked I at do. it i do yeah it's a, it's about time uh, people spend uh, way too long doing what I'm doing right now, looking at a screen. There is a foundation called the Bateman Foundation. Uh, put in a plug for it, Bateman Foundation, all one word, dot org, if people want to uh, check on what we're doing. And there are people out that, that are running the, the thing that really, it, they, they do all the, all the real work. And uh, one of our main thrusts is, of course, to get people uh, turn people on to nature because that is all really really good for your your soul um, and uh, I've, I've always said that everybody should fall in love with nature it's good for nature and good for your own soul I totally agree I totally agree what do you think you you are in this nice bubble with your beautiful wife but do you think this time where the world has looked at nature and had to sequester at home, do you think there's a silver lining in all this for oh, yes. mankind? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think we think more about each other and more about our loved ones and our neighbors. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope that we learn from it. And I can, I can listen to the radio and paint at the same time, of course. And I can watch TV and paint at the same time but I, I sort of glance up at the TV every once in a while. And so I'm fascinated in, in listening to uh, idiots and people of the other, you know, of other opinions. I, I want to uh, hear what they have to say so I know what to say in, in response. That's great. And my last question for you is, of all those paintings that you've done for the Bird Show since 1978, where are they all? Oh, they're... they're um, all over the place. Almost all of my paintings are um, uh, are already spoken for when they're done. The, as I already said, I think the, the good thing about this Birds and Art show is it's not a commission. And uh, even though I do uh, occasional things for commissions, I don't have that as the driving force. So I always just paint what I want. But uh, a fair number are in public collections. Right. Um, there, there is, and this is another whole story, another whole topic. There's generally speaking a prejudice against art with wildlife in it among the uh, art priesthood, I call them, the establishment. Um, they, 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 they have a very low tolerance for something that has birds or mammals in it. Uh, trees are okay. <laughs> but for some reason, other birds or mammals aren't. 
some some of them are that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think they're opening up, and the um, the art snobs are not quite as snobbery snob snobbish as they used to be. <laughs> what do you think of your um, your sister in law's art collection? I think it's fabulous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, Brigitta. And, yeah. Uh, and it's and and Henning too, but I, I think Brigitta is the intellectual driving force behind a lot of it. It's interesting because uh, I, well, I was an art teacher for thirty years, um, and my degree's in geography because I don't think you need to take art. I think you just you do art, and but my degree's in geography because I wanted to get free trips into the wilderness to paint with geography and geology, which I did. I got I got to I know I'm digressing, but I'll be I'll be quick. I got to one or two places. Well, one in particular it was in Ungava, which is the, um, it's between Newfoundland and Quebec, the Lab Labrador and Hudson Bay. It's extreme northern Quebec. And it was in the tundra. And it was in the 50s, 1553. And uh, we were, we had uh, four white guys or European background guys and two Inuit. Uh, working with us. They couldn't speak English. We had to kind of learn Inuit to communicate with them and they helped us with carrying our stuff and so on. They said they knew their people had never walked on that land before. We were too far inland and 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 uh, Inuit are pretty well marine people. They they hunt seals. There, there was, the Farley Mott wrote a book called The People of the Deer, but they became extinct. They were caribou Inuit. Uh, they became extinct, so um, there, they have people that never walked there. So we were actually walking on land. You couldn't do it anymore, but this is the 50s, that no human had ever set foot on before. We named the lakes that were there. So I've had this really lucky life with a background in the window where I, I lived, having been born in 1930. So I, I got way off track. I can't remember your original no, it, anymore. It's fascinating. <laughs> it's absolutely fascinating. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's Who's a, your favorite artist? My favorite artist, I guess if I had to pick one, and it was influential, was be Andrew Wyeth. Why is that? I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Or, uh, he's, uh, he was the first realist around 1900. What happened was realism went out and uh, subject matter went out was not of interest and um painterliness came in from 1900 and it reached a peak around 1950 with the abstract expressionists like jackson pollock mm -hmm. it was only paint the subject matter was definitely a no-no it was only all about paint you could dribble or you could slap it on and uh, i um i I went through that phase where I was just slapping on paint, but I found that it was uh, not really enough to keep the mind alive. I would, you know, sit in front of this canvas and go slap, 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 and hmm, oh, that was fun. <laughs> that all there is. Uh, th there's a uh, what was her name? She was a uh, Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee had a song in those days. Is that all there is? If that's all there is, my friend. And I, I was saying, you know, it's all, it, it was fun, but it's all over now. And I find it much more engaging to look at the particularity of nature and say, this is the bark of an elm tree, whereas this is the bark of a maple tree. And it, each one has its own personality and they're worth looking into. And I, I think it's dishonoring your subject matter to just slap on paint and not and not care about the names of the trees or the names of the birds or whatever well you speak to me because my studies were fine arts and landscape architecture so oh, good. You speak the same language but it was so lovely to speak with you thank you so much Okay, thank you. I really enjoyed it. And have, I hope you continue celebrating your birthday all year long. Thank you. Yep. And if we, if we could do fireworks for you, we would. <laughs> well, I guess they'll come in due course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. July 1st. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it a lot, too.
Okay, take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.